All right, we're live. What is up? The Unplugged Alpha episode 104. Welcome. Got Columbus, Ohio, Burlington, BC. All right. Well, welcome to the show. We've got a request on this one, which is something I've done before. You guys seem to like. Um, just a written email from a guy that wants to basically figure out the best practices for keeping her. And I've rephrased it to keep her obsessed with you. Um, you guys are open to shoot me an email or sponsor a topic on anything you want. The link to do that is it's basically on my website. You can just I gotta turn my finger this way because it's mirrored. Just go to my website and um, you can figure out how to sponsor a request there. Um, we'll hop right into this because uh, I think this is a great one. Um, I'm going to, in all chat, just drop uh, the reminder for you guys to come over and uh, join us on YouTube. That is where the uh, join link for the Q&A segment will be uh, pinned to the top of the live chat. You only get it during the live chat, so come on over and watch from there. Hit like while you're at it and subscribe to the channel. Um, let's get right into this. Let's get right in this. And I'll drop the link to uh, call in in just a little bit. But let me just read this first before I uh, get into the feedback. So it's in the description below. It says, hey, Rich, normally I'm not the type of person who would reach out with a question like this, but I need some clarity. I'm a big fan of your channel. And what I like about the way you present your information is you do so in a completely objective, matter of fact, matter of fact manner without any biases or emotion. Well, I try. I mean, I get criticized, but I try. However, I've been dating a woman for the past three months, and it seems like she's a perfect fit for me. Well, first thing is, you shouldn't be planning these things out at the three-month mark. But I'll get more into that later. But you've only been dating her for three months. So to say that she seems like she's a perfect fit is a little bit premature. And if I'm being honest, it's kind of a plugged-in mindset to some degree. Uh, this is something that has not only ever happened to me before, but I never expected it would happen at all. I'm 36, she's 31, and both of us know we never want to have children and we're on the same page. With... <laughs> You've known this chick for three months, and you already both know that neither one of you ever, 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 ever in your entire lifespan want to have kids. You see where I'm going with this, and we're on the same page with regards to pretty much every aspect of life, including... Hobbies, political views, ambitions, personal tastes, etc. It feels like, I'm going to do this in quotations, it feels like, not I think, I've talked about this many times, we're starting this paragraph here with the feels, which is a feminine start to anything, but again, I just point to the facts, guys. You know, that's all I do. This feels like she's the right person at the right time. Like, see, let me just stop there for a sec. A lot of the times when people are like, this feels like the right person at the right time. It's like manifesting something. Like they think that this is a message from somebody or some signal or sign or something and it's you know the right time and she has to be the right one. And I don't really like that starting point. I don't like a lot of the starting points in what I'm reading here so far. Anyway, like most people, I've had crushes, felt infatuation, and I've experienced sexual urges, but this is something completely different. Whenever we spend time together, it's always great conversation, great sex, and an overall comfort level I've never felt. Something every dude has sent, said dozens of times over within the first three months of dating a chick. Am I right, guys? Please let me know in the comments. The th like the first three months is always a honeymoon phase. It's always great conversation, great sex, great comfort level. I've never felt this before. We're each other's lobsters, right? Anyway, my question is, what do you re recommend as far as a long-term situation that does not involve marriage. And my friend, I will answer your question and give you tons of valuable advice, including all of you guys watching right now. I truly believe this woman is special and don't want to lose her. However, I've read your book and I'm extreme, extremely red pill aware. No, you're not. Not all the way, but I get that you're trying. Especially as it pertains to the potential pitfalls awaiting man. If he chooses to get married, I would really appreciate your perspective on this and thank you for taking your time. All right. Well... Here we go. What do we start with on, on this one? Well, I'm, I'm going to dissect this sort of paragraph by paragraph, and then I'm going to get into the feedback here. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've got at least a dozen very, very useful points. Some of these I've never even spoken about before. This is, this is long-term game. This is about 
how to have game on a long-term basis and keep her attracted with genuine burning desire, basically keeping her in your orbit. Something that I've personally done. So many times actually, but it's just, you know, most recently since I've unplugged myself has been the best experience of them all. And again, you know, I say this with some experience, with some salt and pepper in my beard, having done some things. So this guy doesn't want to get married, claims that they're soulmates, especially essentially without even saying it, but you know, she's the right person at the right time, doesn't want to mess it up. Uh, she's special, doesn't want to lose her. Um, so, I mean, based on what we're reading over here, you got to put, put the brakes on this, first of all. Getting this excited this early on to me questions whether or not you've, you've spun plates and let the cream rise to the top. Because the kind of gal that you're describing here that's this perfect, that's this special, probably won't reveal herself in the first three months. Just being honest. Um, she's the kind of gal that needs to come to you. And I've said this many, many times, and I didn't hear you talk about this here in your little email to me, but she's the kind of girl that you're spinning plates, dating a bunch of women simultaneously in a non-monogamous fashion. You know, you're doing your thing. And then this gal over here comes to you and says, hey, Rich, I dig your vibe. Don't want to share you. I want to claim you. Where do we stand? I want to build something serious with you. I don't want to see anybody else. Other guys are invisible to me, blah, blah, blah. Like some sort of soundbite or some sort of narrative like that. I'm not hearing this. I'm hearing she's my girlfriend in three months and she's a perfect fit and she's special. And how do I not screw this up, Rich? Well, you're already starting to screw it up by feeling this infatuated, right? You've said, like most people, I've had crushes, felt infatuation, have experienced sexual urges, but this is something completely different. Is it? Is it really? Or is it just something that actually feels good? And the other thing too that you got to remember is what you're describing here, like most people have had crushes, infatuation, experienced sexual urges, but this is something completely different. She just gets me is usually what follows up after this. And trust me, I've had hundreds of private calls with guys that tell me this exact same story. She just gets me. She's perfect. It's completely different. I've never seen anything like this before in my entire life. This is brand new at 36. Never seen it ever. If you've never seen anything like this ever in your entire life, and this is only happening just now, one thing I would caution you to consider is that there are these women, these chameleons, these actors, if you will. Some people call them borderline. Some people call them narcissistic. I'm not here to diagnose personality disorders. And let's be honest, none of, our qualified, none of us are really qualified to do that. But if she's crazy, it should become obvious within months. Not saying three months, within months, six, seven, eight months, that sort of timeline. Have you vetted her against my 21 red flags? Does she have daddy issues? Is she a feminist? Does she associate with the unhappy and lucky? Uh, does she try to compete with you? Does she keep men from her past around? Is she poor with money? Is she violent? Does she have extreme jealousy? Is she a party girl? Is she covered in tattoos and piercing? Does she have a big notch count? Is she a single mom? Does she seek validation? Is she a sugar baby or has been in the past? Is she a pathological liar, baby rabies, hissy fits? All that, right? Here, I'm just going to put this because I know there's some new people to the, the channel. But let me put the banner at the bottom because you need to get on my email list if you're not. To get the 21 red flags, it's absolutely free. Is she any of those things? And I can tell you, within three months, it's nearly impossible to identify any all of these red flags. Um, a pathological liar will not... Re will not reveal themselves within three months. It's not likely. Like anybody with a personality disorder that relies on, on these sorts of behaviors won't reveal themselves. So that's the first thing is put the brakes on it and chill the fuck out, dude. Let's see what she's made of. Travel with her. Apply some stress to the relationship. What does she do when you travel and the luggage gets lost? Does she lose her shit and yell at the airline? Or does she say, Rich, let's just go to the store and get it a couple of bikinis. We'll be fine for a few days until it shows up. This is how you test something on a long-term basis to see what she's made of. You just can't throw all caution to the wind and just say she's perfect and she's special because we've all had a special sort of girl in our life in the past who turned out to be batshit crazy, right? So slow down. What kind of experience do you have? You know, the way you're, you're writing this, I'm guessing you don't have a ton of experience uh, dealing with women on a long-term basis. Um, but that's the first thing that I would say is chill the fuck out. Now, I'll go to my talking points here in a second. Um, before I do, let me grab the invite link for you guys watching this on the YouTubes. 
and I'll pin that to the top. So if you have a question on this show, call in and ask a question. You can do so. Uh, there's a StreamYard link. It is free to call in, uh, but it is live. So you will be on the channel. So <laughs> just make sure uh, you have a good question. Or if you have a disagreement, you have a better way to solve a problem that I've talked about before. Well, let's hear your solution. I've, I've, I've said many, many times, if you disagree with something that I say and you've got better solutions, uh, happy to have that conversation. All right. So my talking points, my notes, if you will, on how to keep her obsessed with you. Because again, that's really what the point of this guy's post is. I'm kind of taking a few steps ahead of him and saying this is what is going to be the most useful because I think he's really rushing into this, all excited. She's special. It's a big surprise that things are going this well. And basically saying, how do I not fuck this up? And I'll tell you how you don't fuck this up. So in no particular order, I've got a whole bunch of them on here and I'll go through as many as I can in you know the first 45 minutes or so before I start taking questions. But queue up if you have a question. First thing, first note I have is be irreplaceable. If you are her best option, if you're her Pergamus best option, she looks at you every day, she says this guy is unbelievable, what a phenomenal dude, I couldn't possibly do any better, other men approach her, she ignores them. Like this is the ideal situation that you're basically describing. You want other guys to be invisible and you want her to be in, infatuated with you. You need to be irreplaceable. If, if she thinks that there's hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of other guys out there that are better than you or equivalent to you, then you're replaceable very easily. So you want to be an irreplaceable object in her, in her life. How do you do that? Be the best version of yourself, right? I'll talk about a lot of those things that kind of fall into play and sort of toe the line with that notion, but being a competent, exceptional man, if you're average, you're boring, right? You know, I've said this many times, you can do anything to women today except bore them. They hate that shit. They don't like um, anything that's predictable. They like excitement. It is what it is. Again, I'll get into more of those points in a second. The other thing that I would say is um, some absence is very good for a situation like this. Um, I think one of the big mistakes that guys make is a rush right into, let's be together all of the time. Hey, what are you doing Monday night, babe? Cool, you get together. Hey, what are you doing Tuesday night, babe? Cool, you get together. By Wednesday, Thursday, she's probably not that enthusiastic about spending time either as she was on Monday. Just being honest, right? So uh, Dr. Orion Taraban did a video called Give Her the Gift of Your Absence, one of his older ones. And you know, I had him on my channel for Playing in the Wind. I totally agree with it. It's like, you, like absence does make the heart grow fonder. Being constantly available, responding to her text messages immediately. When she says jump, you say how high. When she says she wants to see you on the night, you're always there to see her. Um, you, you have to be somewhat distant, somewhat unavailable, somewhat um, absent in her life. I'll tell you this right now. I know very, very few married people that are exceptionally happy or are in long-term relationships that are exceptionally happy. But the common denominator in every single long-term relationship, and I know lots, lots of married couples that have split up, fight, hate each other, call each other names, disparage each other, sometimes in front of each other, sometimes behind their backs. I know lots of people that are together that don't really like one another. The only ones that I know that really like one another over a long period of time, like they are obsessed, is when they spend time apart. So spending time apart is good for the relationship. Give her the gift of your absence. You know, I've said this many times before. The most successful marriage that I know is a good friend of mine who ended up traveling a lot during the course of his entrepreneur uh, career, 20, 25 years, um, was probably home around a week, week and a half tops a month. And the rest of the time he was busy with the business, uh, that pursuit of excellence, that chase of excellence, let her stay at home, raise the kids. He did this thing with the business and it worked out real well. And they're still infatuated with each other 25, 30 years later now, almost. I think it is actually going to be honest with you because I know their kids are outside of university. You get the point. Don't always be around. Scarcity equals value. Okay. If you're around all the time, you're not scarce. There's no value. You have to be somewhat scarce. So consider that. Um, be strong, fit, lethal. I don't know how many fucking times I got to say this, guys, but I'm going to keep saying it. 
A lot of guys that ask me for advice, book me on consults. I see them on Zoom calls. I see them calling on my shows, but I'm a high value guy. But da, 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 da. it's like, yeah, but you're fat. I'm just going to say it. Look, if you're not in shape, if you're not physically fit, if you've read my book, which everybody always starts, yeah, I've read your book, it's been helpful, blah, 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 then why don't you have the 1.62 golden ratio? Why are you asking me about shit that doesn't matter if I can see three chins on you? Okay. This seems so basic to me, and it is something that so many guys just completely screw up entirely. I had that guy on a couple of weeks ago, the guy that was an incel, five foot six, 110 pounds, didn't, didn't understand the importance of a strong masculine frame, thought 110 pounds was acceptable. My chick weighs more than that. Like being fit and strong and lethal to some degree are skills that are useful to you as you navigate the world. Um, you're walking down the street. And I'm walking down the street. And if you're buck 10, five foot six, and I'm 6'2", 215, 220 or so, and there's a bad guy walking the other way that likes to pick on somebody or pick pockets or, you know, wants to steal a watch, he's going to go for him, not me. Being fit, strong, and lethal matters. Knowing how to fight is helpful. Having some sort of combat skills is helpful. But at least don't look like a skinny schlep or a fat pig. Get your, get, get your health in order. It's not just for women. It's for you. It's for your own health later on down the road and for your life. Just women happen to like that, okay? And you don't go for the bodybuilder look, swimmer's body. That, that's it, right? Like, look like Michael Phelps, done. You don't have to be a bodybuilder. Chicks don't even dig that, to be honest with you. Um, let's cover be a gentleman and an asshole at the same time. It has to be said. Women like a gentleman, but they also like an asshole. Hold the door open for her when she's all dressed up. You're going into the restaurant. Pull out her chair, sit her down, help her put her jacket on, help her take her jacket off. That kind of stuff that a gentleman does. You can also be a little bit of an asshole too. There's an old saying in the UK that I used to hear when I lived over there. You know, to keep her around, you've got to be a little bit mean to have her being keen on you, right? If you want her sweet on you, you're going to have to be mean if you want her keen. So... Don't be a nice guy, be a kind man, be a gentleman, but don't be a nice guy. Don't be a pushover. If you want to know what that means, there's a book called No More Mr. Nice Guy. Dr. Robert Glover wrote it. Good read. I've recommended it a million times. If you haven't read it, it's worth checking out. I make some references to it in my book. Basically, the TLDR version of it is don't be a nice guy, but be a kind man, right? If you want to dive down the rabbit hole to understand what all that means, you can go do the work and read that book. Uh, what should we do? Let's do the significance of captivation. So being like being significant matters, right? Um, look, there's no way around it. Women like significant guys. They stick around guys that are significant in the world that are compelling, uh, that are captivating, that have something going on. Um, you know, I've talked about this before. There's loads of super successful guys that have had two, three exits. And, you know, by that, like, I mean, like seven, eight figure exits out of their business, made a ton of money, are retired, semi-retired sort of thing. And they become coaching clients because they need help with, you know, the gals, they were a total weapon in the workforce in their business and they do really well. And then, you know, you get into them and they're like, you know, I just can't keep them around. It's like, well, you're tall, you're good looking, you've got loads of money. Uh, you know, you're not out of shape, you know, you're in reasonable good shape. So what, what's the problem? Like why? Well, they seem to get bored and leave. Okay. Well, that's a problem, right? Right. So the notion of doing something of some significance, like even like I had this conversation with, with a world-class athlete once. Okay. I was having lunch with him, a uh, major league baseball player. And he's telling me the story. He's got rings and everything, you know, from uh, world series. Um, inductee to the Hall of Fame. I'm not a big fan of baseball, so I'm trying to remember all the accolades, but big ass name. Like if I mentioned his name, like you would recognize him. And dude's retired, career's done, and he sits down on the couch and he wants to take a nap. And his wife comes over and she starts chirping him. What are you doing? I'm going to take a nap. Well, you can't do that. You know, like you've got to find something to do basically is what she said. He's like, no, I've, I've done what I need to do and I'm going to take a nap right? Like that's the component of having frame in an LTR, but it's everybody that gets shit tested in that area. Even world-class athletes will get shit tested in that area. B 
being significant and captivating in your life throughout your life matters. You want to keep a woman around. You want to keep her in your frame. The frame component of this is a totally different conversation, but doing those things keeps women interested in you. If you're predictable and do the same fucking thing every single week of your life, she will get bored. She will lose interest in you and other things may become more interesting to her. I'm not saying she's going to leave or she's going to bounce, but other things may or may not become more interesting to her. You spend the same predictable schedule watching basketball on a certain night and watching college basketball the next night, watching football, Cheeto dust is all over your shirt, you're packing on weight, you're not doing anything significant with your life, you're not doing anything to improve it. That's going to suck. Being significant and captivating. You want to keep a check around. The dude's asking the question. You want to keep her obsessed with you? Do some shit with your life. I mean, I'd like to say it's as simple as that, but those that understand, understand, right? Because, because they're doing it or they have done it. Let's go to F her properly. Now that we're a few minutes into the video and we can now talk a little more openly because YouTube doesn't like certain words in the first 10 minutes. I said it, you have to F her properly. If you can't do that, she ain't going to stick around very long. She's going to find it somewhere else, right? You have to be, there's a really good scene in Devil's Advocate. Uh, Al Pacino's in that. And if you don't know Al Pacino that well, he's not a large man in stature. I think he's about 5'5 five, five or so. And he makes a statement, you know, his line is, you know, something along the lines of, he rocks this girl's world and he's talking about the importance of rocking a gal's world, effing her properly to his mentee. And in that scene, he basically says something along the lines of, you know, she turns around and looks at him after he's done. Like, how did you do that to me? That's what you want a woman to look at you like, you know, she's like, she's got to look at you like, wow, holy shit. Like I need to, uh, you know, give me a walking cane or something, or maybe I got to call the municipal office and get a, uh, temporary handicap parking permit. Cause I can barely walk this week. Right. Like this is, like I said, effort proper. I'm not going to explain it step by step. Cause this is YouTube, a uh, guy by the name of Sterling Cooper. I've talked to him on my channel a long time ago. He has a course on that kind of stuff. Um, I can't remember the author's name, but there's a book called sex God method. Um, if you're already the Don, you're not going to learn anything from it. But if you don't know anything about effing her properly, read the sex God method. It will, it, it fills in the gaps. Okay. So I'll say that the next thing will be, do not live together. Now, this one is going to be very controversial. I've thought about making a, a video about this, uh, in my car, talking about it in length, because this is kind of like the sort of topic that I'd like to wrap about. Um, I've been with my gal for a few years now, obviously, and, uh, we're non, uh, cohabitating, uh, long-term relationship. You know, we've been dating for a long time. We don't live together. Uh, do women want to live with you after a long time? Yeah. They'll make requests. Um, you know, the two smartest guys, three, is it now three? Yeah. About three, three of the smartest guys that I've seen that have had the most successful long-term relationships. Um, that do well post-divorce, you know, into their 40s, 50s, and 60s sort of thing like that. They never live with women again. These guys are divorce lawyers. They're smart. Um, they know how to keep a little bit of distance. They know how to keep a little bit of uh, scarcity in the equation. Um, they know that absence does, in fact, make the heart grow fonder. And they do know that living together complicates the relationship to some degree from a legal perspective and also from a fam familiarity perspective. Big word to say sometimes on video, right? But if you become too familiar, too common, if you become something that is always around, you will get bored. You will get bored. You'll get bored of her and she'll get bored of you. Uh, the enthusiasm that you have in the three month mark that you're talking about over here. And again, I mean, in this guy's particular you know, scenario, he's saying, uh, we don't even ever wanna have kids. In that case, I don't see any reason why you would ever wanna commingle your lives or live together at all. Um, I can't remember who said it, but somebody from the Mano Swamp said something along the lines of, uh, I want to be married or I'd love to be married again one day. I'd love to throw a log on the fire, uh, you know, have a glass of wine, share a dinner and then, you know, blah, 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 like all the other romantic stuff, love, sex, all that good stuff. And then I want to walk home down the street to my house and go to bed. 
Um, and there's something to that. Having a little bit of distance in a long-term relationship and not living together, I personally think can be a great thing. You have to know how to manage it. Uh, women will press you for it. Um, you know, the response that I give is like, okay, well, you know, take a look around and show me a perfect example of two people that have been living together uh, over a long period of time that are, that are still obsessed with one another. And they don't exist. They really don't. Um, there might be some examples made, but it's like, you know, if they have a solution, I'd like to hear about it. Um, I'd, I'd love to hear somebody that's been in a long-term relationship living together over many years that is still infatuated with them. The only times that I've seen that happen is when there's distance, when there's travel, when there's business interactions, when there's other obligations that take them apart from one another so they're not on each other's feet all the time. Um, women, like I said, uh, that baseball player, once he retired and wanted to take a nap on his couch, wife didn't like it. What are you doing here? Why are you taking a nap? What's this about, right? A little bit of distance is good. A little bit of scarcity, a little bit of... So some of the strange is good. You know, you want to keep her a little bit obsessed with you, right? Um, other note I have here is putting a dent in the universe. Are you doing it? Are you? You know, serious question, because if you're all about her, if you're infatuated with her, if it's like, I've had crushes, felt infatuation, I've experienced sexual urges, but this is something completely different. Whenever we spend time together, it's always great conversation, great sex, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but are you putting a dent in the universe? Or is it all about her all the time? Um, what are you doing with your life? Are you doing something of significance, right? What, do, what is your purpose? What is your mission? Is it just her? Because that's all I'm getting from reading this, right? I don't know what it is. You know, when people fill out this form to request a video, um, let me put the banner up for that one because I know that's going to get one. Where do I find that link, Rich? Um, here it is. Right there. When... People fill up that form to request a video. They do their little email. And then there's a section at the bottom that says, well, link, you know, like link your socials so I can take a look into your life. This guy didn't look at socials, which tells me he doesn't have a life to look into. Or could be that it's so private that he doesn't want me to know about it. Either way, it doesn't matter because you guys know that I've never breached anybody's trust. If you're making a request from me to get some feedback on something, you know, if you've watched my videos long enough, I've never, ever, ever, and I will never do it, breach anybody's trust knowingly or intentionally sharing their social media, anybody in the outside world. It's private. I need to take a look at it to see what you're about. Maybe you got nothing going on there. Maybe you want to keep it private. I don't know, but I didn't get to you know, see any of that. So I don't know what, what your purpose is. I don't know what you're doing with yourself. I don't know how significant you are, how captivating you are. What's the, what's the dent that you're putting in the universe? Another note here. Be attractive, don't be unattractive. So simple. Who said that, Rhinestone? Be attractive, don't be unattractive. Be good looking, be compelling, be interesting, be on some something, right? Be a guy that other women want to be with and other men want to be. That is attractive. Don't be unattractive. What does that mean? Don't be fat, don't be lazy, don't be incompetent, uh, don't be broke, uh, don't have zero status in the world. You know, like the opposite of that, obviously, is all that that means. Um, got a few other here. Let's let's deal with these too. She must know that she is replaceable. So you might think that's counterintuitive to the notion of obsession. How do you get a woman obsessed with you? Well, I've given you some good pointers. But another way to do it is so that she understands that she can be replaced. I'm not saying to overtly state it. No, bitch, I gotta replace you. No, that's not the show. That's not how I roll. But it should be known as a man of some action, of purpose, of putting some dent in the universe, of some significance that, again, I'll go back to it. Men want to be you. Women want to be with you. That you have options. If you don't have options, if none of that exists, then you look pretty boring to her. You look like you look like you are her only source of intimacy, potential intimacy at all. So don't be that, right? She has to know covertly by way of your actions and your lifestyle choices that she can be replaced. Don't go on and on. You see these dorks on social media. It's her birthday. It's Valentine's Day. It's Mother's Day. It's a wedding anniversary. 
and every single frickin' post is the dork praising her, putting her up on a pedestal. I'd be nothing without you. You're my blah, 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 rainbow sunshines and butterflies, my stars, my moon, all this stuff. And the funny thing is, is when you click through over to his social media or over to her social media on like an anniversary, you know, for example, there's no mention of him. <laughs> it's her and her girlfriends with wine glasses on the beach on her last girl's trip away. And, you know, his is like a picture of the entire family. You see what I'm getting at here, right? Like you have to be a guy of some significance. You have to be of some competence, of some interest in the world. Uh, the other thing that really matters too is she has to understand that she's got first dibs to you, but doesn't own you. So I don't think that's anything that you can communicate. I mean, you don't want to, you don't want to have to get to the point where you have to com communicate it overtly. Um, anytime you have to get to an overt statement like that, um, you're not going to a good area, you know, for being honest, it just should be understood that she has first dibs on you, but she doesn't own you. If she feels like she owns you, like she can do wrong and get away with it, you're screwed, buddy. You know, you really are. Um, like she has to understand that, that, that there could be consequences to bad choices, um, in that relationship and that you do have options that you will exercise other options. Uh, a good example of that is guys that end up in sexless marriages or sexless long-term relationships. You see these all the time on these uh, chat forums and Reddits and Facebook discussion groups. Been married for seven years. We've been together for 10 years. We have sex like once every six months. When before we got together, it was all exciting and we would hang from the chandelier and monkey sex and blah, 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 right? If she's, if she's not exercising her right to first dibs, Take it elsewhere. Remember, she doesn't own it. You have to, you have to make sure that she understands that there that there has to be work on her part to maintain the relationship. Um, because women do try to get comfortable, and I don't think they do this intentionally or get slow or anything like that. But they will try comfort and some laziness in some regard for a variety of reasons. For example, um, you're with a girl. Whenever she's left your place in the morning, in the past, she's always made sure that the sink was empty and your bed was made. Now, months go by, that doesn't happen anymore. Some guys will let that slide and just be like, yeah, I'll make my own bed, or I don't even need to make my bed, or it's okay, I'll put it in the dishwasher later on. But the acute guys, the guys that are unplugged, that are really aware, will say something. Hey, you know, I actually chose you. Like, one of the reasons why I chose you is because... I noticed that you would take the care of making my bed in the morning, you know, before you would leave. And that, and that matters to me. Like I noticed that, right? Why would you stop that? Right? Like what you did to get you in the door should continue throughout the course of the relationship. You see what I'm saying? Right? Um, I think that's it. I don't need to continue on with anything else. We covered a lot of stuff here. Um, the link to hop on in and uh, do the Q&A segment is pinned at the top of the YouTube. And here, I'll grab the link. Again, head over to YouTube. If you're watching this on the Twitter, the Twatches, the Facebooks of the world, whatever, uh, hit that link and go over to YouTube and hit StreamYard, which is pinned at the top. This is call in and ask a question. You want to ask me a question about tonight's topic, anything outside of this? Or you have a disagreement, you, want, you have a better solution to something I've talked about. Let's hear what you got. Um, let's run the ad reel and uh, we'll hop into the Q&A segment in just a second. Let's, uh, what is it, about a minute and a half? Here we go. This episode is brought to you by the Unplugged Alpha Supplements and Grondike Soap Company. Brothers, if you're like me and you take what you put in your body seriously, you'll want to use the Unplugged Alpha Supplements. An obsession with absorption is what sets this line apart from the others. You want to make sure that you absorb as much of the supplements as possible so you don't end up peeing out expensive urine. My supplement line is made in the United States from the highest quality domestic ingredients. And unlike cheaper supplements from China in plastic bottles, Mine ship in dark glass bottles to keep your supplements fresher, longer, and won't seep endocrine disrupting plastics into your supplements. Nothing is a hard tablet. Everything is in an easily digestible, bioavailable capsule. You can filter all products by various categories, including testosterone support, estrogen metabolism, fat burning, immune health, sleep support, 
and performance. Visit theunpluggedalpha.com forward slash shop and use the subscribe and save option to get 10% off your supplement orders or use coupon code alpha10 for 10% off a one-time order to try it out. Then I use tactical soap and God of War beard oil every day. Tactical soap is a handmade product made in the United States from ingredients you can actually pronounce, not conventional endocrine lowering toiletry chemicals. Both the soap and the beard oils are infused with bio-identical pheromones that are designed by a clinical psychologist and pheromone expert to maximize attractiveness to the opposite sex. Go visit coopersoap.com and get 10% off your order today. Guys, check out my website at richcooper.ca for more information on booking me for coaching, my community, my courses, and a whole bunch more. You can also find all the useful links pinned below in the top YouTube comment of all my videos. Now let's get on with the show. <laughs> I'm just reading the chat here. Oh man, you guys are funny. Um, oh yeah, to the point of the su uh, of the supplement line, there's restocking happening right now. So pretty much everything is back in stock. I think uh, DK and oil are the last uh, new batches to arrive, which should be in later on this week, hopefully, but everything else is back on the shelf. So apologies for any of the late orders or anybody that put something in a cart that didn't go out. Um, they should be shipping all this week for those of you that um, were asking. Um, again, the call in, the link is at the top of the YouTube live chat. It says call and ask questions to stream your link. Got a few people waiting in here. So let's get right into this. Uh, let's start with G. G. Hyman? Heeman? I don't know. We'll uh, we'll get the pronunciation correctly. What's up, G? Hello, can you hear me? No, he left. <laughs> okay, well, you can come back and click that link and we'll have that conversation. Let's try Willem then. He's got, uh, he says he has an interesting question. All right, okay. what do you have? Hey, Rich, uh, I see you have your nice tailored shirt again. I want to quickly play you uh, on the... I put my uh, very short video. Uh, can you see it maybe? Or you can play it. It's 20 seconds and I would uh, very much be interested in your thoughts. Can you, uh, you have to, you have to hit the present button at the very bottom there. Present. Yes, yes, yes. And then share video. it there. But I've already shared the video. It says that it's in the chat. Okay, there it is. Add to stage. New girlfriend, right? I'm Where's careful it? with the term, but yes. Okay, I'll the new up. girl you're dating. Yep. You well, got yourself a first class ticket and you put her in economy. Yo. <laughs> if you think within two weeks of knowing <laughs> me as a human that I am putting you. What is this clip from? Uh, put, uh, five, five, five more seconds. That, that's the point. Sure. Doing a $3,000 That's LAX. when you do that stuff no, in the it's beginning. Not. So it's you like, want to know what that's called, buddy? Setting a poor precedent. You are a cheapskate, though. <laughs> Okay. What's your thoughts? What's your thoughts? Did, did he do it right? Like he knows the girl for two weeks and he refused to pay her the first class tickets and he just let her sit in the economy, but he treated himself. What what's your I thoughts? mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't get on a flight with any gal within the first two weeks or let alone pay for her flight within the two weeks. So that seems strange from yeah, from the get go. It's interesting, you know. He he like he decided that he barely knows her for two weeks and that he, she doesn't deserve to be taken on a uh, first uh, on the first ticket flight. Uh, Where was he flying her to? That's just a short clip, so I don't have the full context. So, um, somewhere in America, you know, from Cali to you know, but to LAX, I think. But you know, it's interesting. Well, like a date? No, uh, I don't know. Business meeting, anything. It doesn't really matter. But he, well, I think it's interesting, like how he decided that she doesn't deserve to sit in the first class because she just knows him for two how weeks. How about how about she doesn't deserve a flight? Period. Like, why would you fly a chick after only knowing her for two weeks? I mean, you got to be pretty thirsty to do something like that. Like, I get the notion as well. She doesn't deserve first class the way that I fly. So I'll put her in economy because I don't really know her that well. But why even fly her anywhere? Like, why not just not do it? Well, well you know, let's say that you want to take her. Why not? You know, you can meet her while already doing something useful. So why not? Why don't you have other options? Like I would have better options than to have to fly some chick that I barely knew for two weeks somewhere. Hmm. It just That's doesn't make cool. any sense the way that I, so the way that I think is why would I invest into a chick that I've only known for two weeks at that level? Like even if she was a 10, who cares? You got to have somebody else out there that you're talking to. That's at least nearly as attractive. Um, it seems like beta behavior to me, you know, if I'm being honest, Perfect. but the fact that he goes and puts her in economy and he takes first class, people are going to be like, yo, King, you know, like, well done sort of thing. I get it. 
And that's why that probably went viral and you came across it. But I just, I mean, I wouldn't even fly her anywhere in the first two weeks. Like, I don't even know you, Chick. Yeah, but, you know, it's interesting. Like, uh, his friends called him, like, cheap and cheapskate and, like, uh, what Who cares? Doing? People, you know what? People will call you cheap and cheapskate to try to motivate you in a certain direction because society is, is, is telling guys do the right thing, right? They always tell women, you do what's right for you, girl. Look, uh, I've been called cheap, you know, by chicks before. I've been called cheap by friends before. Um, but just because I don't want to do what you want me to do, you can call me whatever the fuck you want to call me. I'm not doing what you want me to do, right? So that's the only reason why people try to shame you in that Yeah, regard. yeah, yeah. But so to it me, it's matter. just like funny how like, uh, you know, he decided like... Oh, it's a funny clip. I mean, there's no question about it. Yeah, it's, it's funny, but... <laughs> But I still question, like, why are you simping for this chick? Like, don't you have other options? Like, if you're going to another city, don't you have a chick in that city if you're so well-traveled? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's real maybe that's just me. You know, it's, fu it's funny. Like, fun funny clip, definitely, like, you know, I don't think there's a lot of dudes that would, like, have the balls to buy themselves the first uh, class ticket, but to put their chick, like, in economy. Like, that's, that's you know, like, some Dan Bilzerian uh, approach. <laughs> I mean, look, man, I, I, you know, I flew to Sardinia this summer with my gal and I flew business, uh, you know, across the pond and she sat right beside me and I paid for it. So like if you've got your shit together and a girl's invested into your relationship and she's done things for you and she's been there when you're sick and she's like, you know, she's that yeah, type yeah. of she material. Deserved, yeah, yeah. She fine. Her, but yeah. two weeks in, I wouldn't fly a chick anywhere, man. It just it just seems stupid to me. Anyway, that's, that's, um, that's, good advice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You got anything else for me, bro? Mm. Okay, Th thanks for popping right, in. We'll see you later. Take care. All right, let's see if we got uh, G Hyman again. So he came back. Let's see if this works. There, you're back. You don't have any audio, though. You're going to have to turn on your mic. The bottom of the screen, there should be a, a, a mute. Make sure you got a mic connected in there. Nope. Still nothing. Tell you what, why don't you why don't you leave and come back, and then in the private chat, let me know when you got yourself uh, checked out. Okay, uh, guys, make sure when you click these um, um, join links, you know, for Streamyard, you got your uh, audio working. You'll see a little bar, like you know, when you start talking, test, test, one, two, three. You'll see a bar, and it moves with your voice. Just double check that. Um, again, if you want to call in and ask a question, it's pinned at the top. Uh, bring any question you want. Tonight's topic anything at all, uh, something relevant to my book, or if you have a challenge, you want to challenge me on something, give it to me. Let me see what you got. Um, let's see him fixing things with headphones and mic cords and stuff like that. <laughs> Bottom here. We got lots of time for call-ins tonight, guys. Is it working, G? Do you have audio? Not yet. Okay, well, tell me when you got it. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to go over here to the chat and see what you guys got for me because people are, you guys are slow tonight. With It's always the same thing with every show, man. The end of the show, there's like a dozen people that want to hop in. It's like, nope, we've done the 90 minutes. We got to go to ladies' night. Um, ladies' night's becoming a interesting uh, exercise. Uh, the panels keep changing. The gals are um, becoming more and more interesting, you know, with the types of conversations that we're diving into, so. We're on at 8.45 this week. And uh, actually, we have a special announcement in that show. I think uh, Moff has something timed for this week, so I'll let him make the announcement um, for you guys because it would be interesting. Anyway, let's see what's here in the uh, the chat that I can respond to while I'm waiting for G to get his audio sorted out. Uh, nice. Oh, my God. Three, got wrecked. My belly man has started about. Yeah, a, so, you know, the notion of... Um, where is it i'm gonna put it up on the screen over here son of krypton it's a lot easier if these are starred for me anyway the, the son of krypton said uh a real high value man doesn't start a fight but he's sure capable of, of finishing it um that's exactly the point um even even the most competent um fighters mma fighters boxers jujitsu any of these guys they generally don't get into street brawls in fact they try to avoid them at all costs there's lots of videos out there online of these dudes um basically trying to step out of the situation up against multiple guys and they end up flattening them all because it's just not worth it man like the guy that runs my runs my dojo he's um he's he's very skilled um he's an older guy 
um, older than me, and he's not very tall, but he's exceptionally skilled in self-defense and martial arts. Um, and I'll tell you the story because it, because it's so relevant, you know, to the point of, of finishing the fight, but not starting them, uh, bout of road rage the guy comes at him, gets out of the car. So of course he doesn't want to stay in his car. He's driving a, a convertible, I think at the time gets out of it. So he's in a good position, uh, cause you don't want to be defenseless, you know, sitting in a car with a top down sort of thing. Who knows what the guy's coming at you with. Anyway, the guy pulled out a, uh, a knife and started swiping at him. And he didn't have a weapon on him. He doesn't carry a weapon. I mean, you're not supposed to carry a weapon in uh, Canada. Like anything that you do in that regard can be severely detrimental if you have to go to court. Uh, ends up getting massive cut down his arm because he had to block. And uh, long story short, he ended up beating the living crap out of the guy, like to within inches of his life. And the only thing that got him out of jail time, because the other side wanted to prosecute him for beating him senseless, was the fact that he had a long gash down his arm with multiple stitches. It's just not worth it. Um, you should you should always try to leave a confrontation, confrontational situation like that. Um, but it's not always possible. So fighting is a skill that you should have anyway. Uh, looks like George is back. Let's see if his audio is back on. Can you hear we're me? Working. Now we're good. Sorry about that, I apologize. Breaking off with a girlfriend. What's happening, man? Um, so I'm trying to unplug myself. Uh, basically, like, made some good progress this first year, I guess. Like, started around the first of the year. Set a goal to ask a new chick on a date mm -hmm. every week. Um, had horrible success, like, the first three months. And then um, went on a date with this chick. And we, uh, I, I actually didn't like her that much at first, but she kept bugging me. She wanted to hang out. Um, and so I kept hanging out with her. I've, I've dated a, a couple chicks, like went on a couple dates with, uh, a couple other chicks since being with this one, but mostly consistently with this one, I guess, like, when do you know? Cause I don't have a lot of options outside of this. And I think I'm my, I think I need to break things off with this girl because she's not really adding or complementing my life. Um, but I don't. Why is she a drain? What is she doing that's making her a drain on your life? Um, I'm very like fit, active. Um, she's she's kind of lethargic. Uh, like when we first started hanging out, she said she was really active and loved to do things. Um, but like we went up for a little mountain getaway like a couple weeks ago. We went on a hike and she rolled her ankle. And um, I know everybody says that's fucked up. <laughs> no, she, no. she rolled her ankle walking. Yeah, I know. Well, okay. yes, she did. And um, so, she, so she's not out of shape. She doesn't walk that often. No. And she like started crying and it was uh, like, I didn't really know what to say. And then I kind of like brushed it off. So it's like, oh, whatever. Like, you know, maybe she trip. It's people make mistakes. But mm. um, I went on a bike ride with her like a couple weeks ago, rode with her like the whole time. It was like a out and back. Uh, route and then at the turnaround point I kind of just like I kind of like left her in the dust just like kicked up my cadence started mm. to pedal have fun but I like every so often look back and um I stopped at a checkpoint and like waited for her to catch up and um she says to me she said the first thing she says like you don't have to make this a race and uh, uh I was just like well like I'm not really trying to race I'm just trying to have fun um, and I kind of brushed it off. And then like 30 minutes later, I was like, Hey, you know, I think that was it really frustrated me how you said that I feel like you're nagging me. Um, and then, uh, we had loose plans to go to dinner last week and then she, she, uh, I forget what happened. She did something that pissed me off and I just kind of like ignored her for a couple hours. She and flaked on you. Did she flake on me? Yeah. No, I, I actually flaked on her. Um, I went and dropped off some paperwork to one of my employees and said like, Oh, so you're running your own business. Yeah. 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 I've called in before. I have my own HVAC business. Cool. Um, so, so basically, so me question for you. So if she's out of shape, why did you go out with her? Uh, not a lot of options to begin with. And it was like, a you meet her? uh, we met online. So, uh, you tell me what you, I've, you're going to roast me, dude. Um, okay, go blind. So like blind date, we matched on dating app. And uh, I saw Blind, like you didn't have a photograph of her. No, before I you went out? Oh, she actually looked good in the photos. I'll say that. 
Um, well, they always look good in the photos. Exactly, but they do. Um, is there, was there like older photo, like five years older, 30 pounds later? Like, what are we dealing with here? Yeah, there was some of that. Yeah. I don't so think she, it was. Okay. That so she catfished you. Or fat yeah. Fished I mean, you. It's not the worst one I've ever had for sure. I mean, yeah, but you got fat fish though, right? I mean, she lied about what she looked like. Yeah. And she actually looked pretty good when, when we met up, but like it's yeah. been about four months now and she's definitely like dropped off. And, um, I, I've confronted her about it and told her, and that's why she started riding a bike. She went and got a bike. So she is like trying to work on these things. Can I just get some frame around what we're dealing with here? Like what's her height and weight roughly? Uh, she's probably like five, eight, 140, 150. No, she's not five, eight. She's probably like five, six, 140, 150. Um, but not fit. You're saying like, she's more flabby. Yeah. And when, like when we first met, she was like just a little bit flabby and now it's just like gotten worse. Yeah. And, um, yeah, these are like things that you can't fix. Like how old is she? 25. Yeah. I don't, I don't recommend guys try to fix any of this stuff. Like, especially in her twenties, it's like, look, man, like women are usually their most beautiful that, you know, their most like the hottest a chick is ever going to be 22, 23 years old. Right. I can go back in my yearbook and I can look at any gal that might show up on, on Facebook that I went to high school with and she looks way better in her high school graduation photograph than she does today. Right? Like this mm -hmm. is as good as it gets. Yeah. So if you're dealing with a chick in her early twenties and she's like, eh, or she doesn't really like blow your hair back. She's kind of like average or average ish or whatever. Or she's, you know, not really looking like what you like. Don't even bother, dude. Like save your save your time for your hobbies, for your interests, for you know, building a brotherhood, friendships, and date, you know, whenever you can, but don't waste your time on eh, because like eh, it's just like and just gets worse. I uh, did it just you, gets so much worse. You're telling me exactly what I was hoping to hear. Thank you. I appreciate it. So so I mean the question I have is if you already knew the answer to this, then why did you do it? Uh, I think that's like something I need to work on. I think I'm afraid of being alone. I've, I've been alone for a very long time and it is like convenient to have somebody around who's available. Uh, yeah. But it's getting to a point where it's like, it's not the juice isn't worth the squeeze anymore. And yeah. I mean, it was nice. Cause like it was, a, I was on such a dry streak for like, I think I didn't have sex for like a year prior to that. Um, where do you live? Like in what part of the States? Uh, I live nearby Boulder, Colorado. Okay. Like like north of Denver. North of Denver, like what's the population? Like uh, hundred thousand. Okay, so it's a it's not a large town then for sure. So I mean, your options no. are going to be smaller. How old are you? Twenty seven. Are there any colleges or universities close by? Yeah, University of Boulder is uh, or CU Boulder is like twenty minutes. I work up there pretty often. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you date those gals? They're a little bit younger. They're probably a little fitter. Um, they got something going on. I have I, I have always seemed to deter girls like that. Um, I'm not like higher educated. I am like I'm self employed. I have my own business, but um, it seemed like uh, my whole life like I just never got a lot of attention from those girls. Uh, when I was younger, I was a like a I was super skinny kind of a nerd i played soccer like here in america i mean i'm what do you do for a living again you said you're an hvac yeah i started my own business like three years ago uh -huh. and um, what do you do you like install these units you sell them service install repair maintenance yeah mostly residential but i'm trying to transition to commercial uh, my dad owns a commercial company here and yeah. he wants me to take it over what do you pay yourself annually uh last year i i'm like 55 is what I made last year. Oh, you should be paying yourself a lot more after three years if you're running the thing and you got employees. Um, yeah, but with like how I set my taxes up, I don't claim a whole lot. Um, yeah. So I you're running most of it through the business? Yeah. Like actually, vehicle, gas, yeah, client meals, entertainment. It's, it's probably more like 80 last year, if I had to guess. And okay. I'll probably do 30% more than that this year. Yeah, look, I mean, you're going to, like, there's there's people in the chat going on about your mustache. Kill the mustache, shave the mustache. Da, da, da. We'll deal with the look in a second. The, the like, the like the school chicks that mm -hmm. think that they're better than you because you're blue-collared and you do HVAC sort of work, um, I always find that funny because I had this conversation with a buddy of mine years ago, and it's like, you know, um, you could be a junior lawyer 
uh, here in Toronto making $75,000 a year. And a chick would probably pick him over a guy that's been running his own, I don't know, plumbing company for 10 years, make, paying himself $200,000 a year, right? Mm -hmm. Just because of the prestige of like the lawyer name. It's like, you know, you could be potential husband material, father material, you know, stuff like that. Um, there's some women that put a lot of weight in education and degrees and, you know, stuff like that. Um, that loses uh, relevance over time, you know, if I'm being honest with you. Like, I don't even have a university degree. And I make more money than anybody they ever went to school with that has university degrees. Most of them are dipshits that, that did nothing with their lives, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it, it doesn't have a lot of relevance as time goes on. Um, when you're in your 20s, you might get some pushback. Just ignore those checks. Oh, okay, you think you're special? Fine, you know, go fuck yourself with your, you know, liberal arts degree, painting, basket weaving, underwater, whatever it happens to be. It doesn't matter. It's not relevant. You want to choose women that, 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 that are choosing you. Um, the relevance to the people talking about a look in the comment section right now about killing the mustache and, you know, getting a look sort of thing. I don't know that, like, I don't know what's up with the mustache. Like, is that the best that you can grow? Oh yeah, man. I can't grow facial hair. Shave it. Shave it then. Yeah. yeah. Like if it's, yeah, if it's not filling in, then it, then it looks like weak game, right? I mean, if you're going to grow a mustache and you need something that, solid. Dude. I just trying something new. Trying yeah. Is it, fine. Like I get it. But I mean, if you want your options to expand and you want to get more women choosing you, then you want to kind of like lean into confidence and a look that's really going to sell for you. And I think that the mustache does you a disservice. It kind of makes you probably look younger than what you are, which is fine if you want to date, you know, super young chicks. But I don't think it's a look that suits you. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. You ever get like, you know, women or friends that say, hey, George, you kind of look like so and so from Hollywood or musician artists. Like, do you ever get that? uh in no not really i don't think so you never get a look like somebody says you know you look like so and so no a lot of people tell me that like my voice sounds like either um better call saul um but i've never got like a look before no okay i got these big ears dude they like that's the only thing that where are you getting big ears from man your ears are totally in proportion to your head um, I think they are now. I think when I was a kid, I got bullied a lot for it because I was like very skinny, had this like skinny neck. I'm I'm very athletic now. Mm -hmm. What's your height and weight? Uh, like 5'11", 190. Okay, so you're in pretty good shape. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in really good shape. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Well, I mean, like as far as the look goes, like, you know, clean yourself up so you look a little bit tighter. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like kill the mustache. You know, your hair looks tight, you know, so just make sure you don't let it get all messy or sloppy or the fade sucks. You know, fades look really good. I know guys that go in weekly, you know, for a fresh fade. I get my beard done on a weekly basis, but I'm also broadcasting weekly too. So it's mm -hmm. it's got to look clean. But if you live your life in that way and you have a high opinion of yourself, a strong opinion of yourself, and you're not bothered or like pushed aside by women that aren't choosing, who cares, dude? There, there, there's 8 billion people on a planet. Half of them are, are women. And you know what? Some of them live in your vicinity. And put yourself out there. Uh, don't waste your time with women that catfish you, fatfish you, you know, whatever it happens to be. Like, if you meet her and she looks nothing like her photograph or she's not attractive enough for you, then just politely say, hey, you know what? This isn't what I signed up for. I got other things to do. But, you know, have yourself a good day and just let her know, you know, you misled me with your photography. Mm -hmm. um, women do that. Like, like women tend to lie about what they look like. Men on dating apps tend to lie about more, more so things like height and success. Um, like they'll stand beside a Lambo in their photographs, even though they don't own a Lambo. They might stand beside shorter people to look taller sort of thing, or they might cut out, cut out taller people in photography. Like those are the things that women typically feel misled about on online dating. So as long as you show up being as tall as you, they think you are, right? And that's really all that matters, right? Uh, just don't lie about your you know, your success in uh, life and just filter through it, man. You got to dig through a lot of dirt to find gold. Right. And, um, you know, you'll get there. Uh, I appreciate the feedback and, uh, the candor too. Yeah. I, I'm going to go shave this mustache right now. <laughs> yeah. Kill it, man. Kill it. And just, you know, use that time on the haircut. Cause you got a good, you know, like a solid, good hair, uh, head of hair. Sorry, I should say, um, what color are your eyes? Uh, they're like hazel green, hazel, like hazel green eyes and blonde hair is super rare. Chicks dig that dude. They do. You are correct. Right. So capitalize on it.
Okay. Thank you. Rich. All right, brother. Take care, man. Yeah. Guys don't understand the power of a, uh, like a look and the confidence aspect of it and really cleaning themselves up. It's like, um, you know, building a strong masculine body, you know, having a nice haircut, get, you know, getting rid of shitty features that, that, that don't complement your facial structure, like a bad mustache or like a, one of those neck beards that, you know, some of the guys have, you know what I'm talking about. Um, all right, let's see what we got here. Guys, again, the, uh, call in link, the stream yard link is at the top, uh, of the YouTubes, uh, click it, join it and, uh, get on in on it. Uh, we got Wahlberger around tonight. Let's see what he's got for us. What's up, man? Hey, Rich. How you doing? Good. What's crackalacking tonight? Well, first of all, that guy uh, does sound like uh, Never Call Saul. But yeah, uh, I didn't get that Never Call Saul bit. I was, oh. I was, I was kind of hoping that there was a look that he was close to because almost everybody will will hear, oh, you kind of look like this musical artist, or you kind of look a little bit like this actor, or even this B roll character from a certain, you know, TV show. And I mean, the point that I was going to make with that is like, have a look, like try to try to replicate that a little bit more. Right. Yeah. Well, what's interesting about that is that uh, never call Saul and that that actor, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, was a, a kind of a sleazy lawyer. Right. With yeah. a bad haircut. But there's also another movie that he should say that he looks it's called Nobody, where he absolutely kicks the shit out of everyone. <laughs> it's an awesome movie. So if, he, if people say he sounds like him, say he's the dude from Nobody, because that's the, the angle he should take, right? Like, uh, them, yeah. good, that, that dude's a good-looking guy, man. Like, guys yeah. got to stop self-deprecating themselves to death and roll at it, man. He's got his own business. Come on. Give me a fucking break. Yeah. You're, you're doing all right. You're doing yeah. all right. Don't let some woman. Keep what do you got for me tonight, man? Yeah, anyway, from last week, you were talking about uh, uh, some issues in regards to court situations and such. Court and, situations. Uh, uh, family law. We had uh, John law. on, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and one thing I wanted to talk, because I've been in it, and I'm currently going through it. Um, definitely, as we've discussed in the past, I was betatized by a, a million cuts, shall we say, mm. and uh, was never married, but um, we share a child together and going through the whole custody scenario. And uh, the fact of the matter now today, Rich, they the courts are so full that they've put in means to make it easier on people. And if fathers take advantage of it, then it makes you much easier on them. So if you, I was lucky because I've got a friend who's a lawyer who said, you know what, I'm not even gonna represent you, but go in to the, to the court, go search out the duty counsel. Duty counsel is generally put into place now just as kind of someone who can talk to you as a lawyer, mm -hmm. but they, they won't, they will deal with you and give you some direct advice. And then not only that is that you get familiar with the court. So you're not afraid of it. There's nothing to be afraid of if you go in there with good faith and confidence. So if you go in. Yeah. One of the things that I would recommend guys do, and I talk about this in my course on divorce and how to plan for it and you know, all the, all the strategies that you're going to deal with is read case law. Um, I don't know if you've done this well, Berger, but there's a site in Canada called canlie.org, C-A-N-L-I-I.org. And you can read public case law uh, about family, you know, uh, alimony, child support issues, all of those matters. Uh, and certain keywords will, will pop up, right? Like if you're dealing with something like parental alienation, like that's a keyword. Like you can search on Canly for any cases that contain parental alienation. And then you can read what defense, what prosecution, uh, you know, what the judge says, any evidence that's like, you can read the entire thing, what happened that day, and you can use it to your own benefit. Um, yeah. Even if you have a lawyer and you're dealing with a difficult divorce, I would still recommend reading case law because what else are you going to do with your time? Like you're dealing with the most difficult bullshit in your entire life that you have, like, like, you, like you have to deal with it. So you can't stick your head in the dirt and try to ignore it. Um, I don't think that you can completely 100% rely on your lawyer for stuff no, like this no. because they well, just, yeah. they just basically deal with the, 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 the fundamentals of divorce. They don't understand the intricacies of your life, of her life, anything back in that, any useful information that, may have been presented in somebody else's case that can now be applied to yours as well, yeah. right? 
Um, well, so I think that reading case law is one of the biggest advantages that you can have if you're going through a divorce for sure. Yeah. Well, some of the best advice that you've given too is saying, uh, go in to go in and sit in on a family law situation, go sit in there in court. Before you get married. what happens right <laughs> do that but do that before you get married so you know what you're getting 100 yeah. but get familiar with what it is i know it sounds weird but go in there to to check it out to get familiar with your surroundings and then go talk to a duty council it's free you know and they will they will are they paralegals or are they lawyers they're lawyers they're okay. lawyers but what's happening is that because the, no no they're full-fledged lawyers uh -huh. Put in there by the court because they're so packed. They want to get people out of court and, and doing agreements individually and quickly because yeah. the family law is so packed. So so they've done a few things and, and created duty counsel, which are on premises at all times. Yeah. And now they're doing something called um, uh, judicial dispute resolutions, a JDR. So when you actually go into court, because I haven't paid a dime for a lawyer. I've gone in there, requested a JDR, and so a judge actually has a, a dispute resolution over the phone generally, where it's between, or online, between you and the other person trying to resolve this situation, right? Mm -hmm. So they're trying to keep it out of the courts as much as possible. And the thing is, is that women do tend to get all the more argumentative. So they actually vilify themselves through this process in many ways. It's just generally what happens so the court is putting into practice these jdrs and as well child support dispute dispute resolutions as well so then that's where they have accountants that are available to the court where you can take your documentation and apply that give that to them so then they will then calculate the child support and you don't have to go and spend a ton of money on lawyers drain yourself because you're doing all that work they're trying to streamline it to make it easier. But the thing is, is that a lot of times when you get in there, if you are in there with good faith and can present yourself and feel comfortable, you're going to look heads and tails ahead of everybody else. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then you don't have to be so afraid of it. And what has happened, I mean, in my case, you know, and in many cases, women tend to backbite. They tend to name call and they can't even help themselves even in front of a judge. So in it's, some cases, they're going to vilify themselves and you come off looking better yeah. and it ends up being a better situation for you. If you give somebody enough rope, they'll, they'll hang themselves. And I think that what you basically just said there is family courts give women lots of opportunities to do that. Um, you have to play the game, though. How many, how many months have you been going through this process? Uh, I've been going through this process. Well, uh, my son is six now. We were apart when he was two. So it's just four years. Been, yeah. So a number of years. So basically Why is what it, it taking is four years. Yeah. Four years. And so basically, it's why is it taking four years? Why? Uh, it's taking four years because she likes to be in court. She likes to contest things. I'm playing, I'm paying the child support. We share him on the face of it very, very well. It's just a way to be difficult, I think. And and the fact of the matter is it's coming off in the way that she communicates to the counselors, to the judges, and so forth. Um, there, like she will name call me literally in court in front of a judge. And name and, call you how? Like like call you? Uh, she'll call me a narcissist or. Some of these things, that, and they just, they hear these terms so much that... Uh, yeah, they can see past that, though. Like, they're not stupid. They do. They do. And 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 so, literally, I sit there in court and say, like, because I have to acknowledge that I'm hearing it. I don't want to mm -hmm. come off as I'm just some idiot that doesn't hear these names coming across. So, I'm like, uh, Your Honor, do you hear this? And uh, he's, and literally, he'll say, I don't even want to get into this. <laughs> right? mm -hmm. Like, just like a... a average person would do because again they can't help themselves from so, saying such rude things even in front of i'm, uh, I'm confused of though so what is the benefit of her wasting time and money going to court for something that she's not going to win like why is she contesting these things um like four years is a long time to keep yeah. going to court for something it like it's not adding up well well there's the thing that that she's been been pushing too is that 
that because I run my own business and I have also worked for other companies at the same time. And she contests that I'm hiding revenue, which I'm not. I'm so she's not. trying to squeeze you for a little bit more money. Right, right. But the fact of the matter is that the situation that we're in and sharing our son during the the practical situation of everything is great is great he, right 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 but i mean like for four years though she's been taking you back to court right, to try to squeeze right. a little bit more money yeah. out of you yeah and and I'm and there's no new money there no so no. why is she continuing on this path for four years that's what i don't understand being argumentative i mean rich some women like to just fight and so and the thing is you yeah but there comes there. a point where they realize that it's wasting their time and money especially but she doesn't have a lawyer either. So really what ends up happening is that we're both going in there. We're there uh, for, uh, say, a morning, right? So it's usually a morning session that we're, we're booked in for. And then so it's it's uh, about four or five hours every three months. we got to go in there and make an appearance. Um, she will say things. I will, you know, mostly it's Barb's coming at me. And I'm mm -hmm. more than happy to say, listen... We're sharing our son very well. He's a happy, uh, growing young boy. And the fact of the matter, as time proceeds, Does she work? Uh, she's been a perpetual student for, geez, now, what is it? Well, a little bit longer, probably six years, about as old as our son. So <laughs> she's been a student for six years since your kid was born. You're the one that works. You're the one that's paying the bills. You're paying her child support, but are you paying her al alimony as well? No, no, because we weren't married. We weren't married. Okay, so you're just paying her child support. So what's her other source of income? Uh, she says that there's grants and such that she's getting for her education. So You know what uh, she needs? She to needs to get laid, dude. She needs to find a new dude that will become the center of her attention. You should offer to take your son more often and be like, uh, hey, you know, I'm going to take him camping this weekend or something like that and give her some free time so she can go out and find some loser to keep her busy. Oh, no, she's, you know what? She's uh, well accommodated there. That's the thing. It's, she's good. I know the person she's with. I'm well aware of who it is. Uh, and, look, and man, you know, I'll tell you something. A buddy of mine used to get calls and bugged all the time from his ex-wife. And you know what he used to say to her? What's the matter? Is Bill not banging you properly? Why are you still bothering me? <laughs> and eventually she got the message and left him alone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said... Uh, you know, there isn't the, the main thing is that she's thinking there's more money in the pot and there just simply isn't. And, and the irony to it is that it should be obvious after four years that there isn't though. You see what I'm saying be. though, right? Like something's missing. Like if she's continuing down his path, like after four years to get it, like what, something that doesn't exist. Like it should be obvious at this point. Anybody with half a brain, even somebody that's borderline retarded would understand with like an 80 IQ that there's nothing, like you can't get blood out of a stone, right? If you've already proved everything, you've demonstrated that it doesn't exist, the judge will throw out the next application, you know, if she comes at it again, once it gets set aside. So something's missing. Like you're either not proving that you don't have the income or she's right. mentally retarded or the well, judge no. is still allowing the retardation to... Uh, persist into perpetuity in his court, which is his problem as well. Right. But there's like yes. something doesn't add up, right? Yeah. Well, well, to that extent. So what happened is is that because I had a combination of working for another company and then having my own my own business, um, my taxes weren't up to date on my own business, and so I went fully independent here early in this year. And so there's this combination thereof, and the fact that she's a student. If, if you make the same amount of money, then then there's no alimony required. Yeah, no, she doesn't have a lot of motivation. I talk about this in my book, too. Like, women don't have a lot of mo motivation to make more money if they're already milking you for money, right? Like, why I get a promotion? Why I get a raise? Why even get a job if you can be a perpetual student and have Wahlberger pay for your shit? Well, you know, I, I mean... It, so I mean, like, you got to prove beyond a reasonable doubt there's nothing else there. And you have to get to the point where the judge is like, stop fucking wasting my time with this and let's just get on with life here. We're not going to entertain any more of these, right? Yeah, yeah. And and the whole time, I mean, I'm paying uh, constantly and that's fine. I'm yeah, good. as long as I'm you're making your payments that. or, it's, you know, it's how it works, man. You know, they, 
they take the money from you. Some of it goes to your kid. The rest of it goes in her pocket. Yeah, yeah. So, but what I'm saying in here too, Rich, to hear the nightmare scenarios that other guys go through in which they never, ever see their kids. You look at me, I have my kid almost 50-50. Am I paying more than probably I should? Probably. But compared to the nightmares that I hear of other people and never seeing their kids ever, yeah. if I if the cost of me is going in every uh, every quarter, every three months to court for a morning and for me to pay the alimony so I can see my son all the time, that's a price I'm willing to pay. Well, are you asking for her for custody? Like are you able to take care of him full full time? No, no, no. I'm not asking for that. I'm not asking for that because I've got a lot of work to do. Yeah. And so and that's what I've learned is that I do need that time. When I don't have him, then mm-hmm. I am working and I'm doing things that need to be done. When I do have him, it's hundred percent him. I've mm-hmm. got my son, it's a hundred percent. And you know what? Now that he's six, it's ingraining all the way. So I'm gonna be coaching him basketball this fall and such. So it's, Mm -hmm. it's more ability to have that attachment with my son and have those meaningful things occur. And it's because I've been able to, to keep this going in this regard so we can have that consistent scenario. And I want to rob time from his mother. I mean, I think it's good essentially to have 50, 50, if you can. Yeah. I think the kid should have good access to both parents where, where it becomes problematic is where she's got the kid all the time and you get like every other weekend, you know, something like that. Something. Very yeah. Basic. And that, and that doesn't happen. That doesn't have. So, so we've shared, yeah, just make him. sure you, you know, you spend your time showing them what a man is, what a man does, you know, he'll, oh. you know, he'll come to start to realize the reality of the, the trivial bickering that you and you know his mom are having right now as he gets old. He probably notices it now, you know, for being honest, because he's six. Yes. So, you know, like th- the thing that dads don't understand when your kids are five, six, seven, you know, whatever it happens to be, is time flies. Time moves really, really, really fast. Really and does. you'll get a Facebook memory and you know, six years, seven years time when he's like 12, 13 years old, and you'll be like, damn, he was small then. And you know, like like don't don't waste those years don't waste those hours don't waste those days you know put it into them do the best you can with mom you know with the bullshit hopefully at some point you know you can prove that she's the unreasonable one and the judge sees that you've proved beyond doubt that there's no extra money hiding somewhere there's not a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow that you dug you know dug a hole for and you'll be fine well and even if even if there is some issues there one thing that dads have got to understand because you'll be told that, that you're not worth much because I've heard that, you know, oh, yeah. that comes your way. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is you are not replaceable. You are irreplaceable. You need to be in your kid's life. Yeah. So don't listen to that nonsense. Anyone saying that you don't matter and that they should just be with the mother and it's better as pure garbage. Yeah. The courts and, don't want to hear that anymore. They've heard that enough. Yeah. Yeah. You need to plug forward, get familiar with the court system and settle yourself in for a ride because then like you just said as he gets older especially when it's a son he's going to realize if you're being a man what a good situation he's got going with a great dad and so that's going to pay off in spades perfect all right man we'll talk to you soon thanks bro take care difficult situations man these things exist people don't uh, you know what i'll say this you know before we wrap up because we do have to get wrapping up. Um, you probably know a guy right now, a friend, a brother, a cousin, a co-worker, colleague, whatever it happens to be, and he's going through a divorce, a breakup, something shitty's going on in his life. Shoot him a quick, quick text message. Maybe you haven't talked to him in a week, two weeks, a month, or something like that. Shoot him a quick text message. Hey, Bill, how's everything going? I know you're struggling or you know going through a tough time right now. Just check in on one of your boys. At least... If you can take anything out of this live show tonight, out of this cast, check in on your boys and make sure they're okay. Because a lot of guys suffer in silence. They don't think that anybody wants to hear them. They don't think that there's any solution, that there's nowhere where their voice can be heard. And if you give them that, it can make a world of difference in a guy's life that's going through some bullshit. Because, hey, life is bullshit. You know, it's, it's tough. Um, we get thrown curveballs all the time and these are all just tests of our resilience. They're all tests of 
how bad we want something, how bad we want certain things out of life. I always say you're either going to find it a way to make it happen or you're going to find find an excuse. And sometimes somewhere, all guys, and I even talked about this in the opening of my book, The Unplugged Alpha, um, at some point can hit rock bottom. And honestly, I talk about it in the opening intro, man. Like there was a time when I was driving down the highway and I was in my forerunner. This was years ago, over a decade now. And, you know, I thought to myself, fuck, things are just shit. They're not going my way. My lawyer's telling me stories like it's never going to go well for me. Business is getting tough. Legislative changes, this and that. And I just thought if I just take off the seatbelt and hammer the throttle and hit a concrete overpass, it'll be done fast. Um, it's it's bottom of the barrel, you know. And I think, I think a lot more guys get to that point than they care to admit, even though they never do anything. They never self-delete. They never take any steps in that sense or regard but i think it's incredibly important to um at least just be an ear you know for somebody going through that so do that after this cast is done uh, there's probably somebody that you know just hey man how's everything going you know is there anything you need um anything you know they just want to know that somebody actually gives a fuck because a lot of the times guys get to point where it's just like nobody cares and uh, like you know the freeing moment in life is when you realize nobody cares and you have 100 percent accountability and responsibility and authority over your life if you know should you wish to take it um and take control of those things and, and take control of those parts of your life uh but it's tough so anyway that being said i'm gonna wrap up the show uh take a quick break we're back on in like 15 minutes with moff got a uh ladies night panel lined up uh, slightly different conversations, similar sort of topics. Uh, we'll see where it goes. Uh, seems like a cool panel tonight. So we'll see you guys very, very soon. Uh, I got to take this banner down and let's roll the outro. And we'll be back in a second. All right, guys, if you enjoyed that podcast, make sure you visit my website at richcooper.ca to learn more about my courses, my book, The Unplugged Alpha, community, or booking me for private coaching. Also, if you are a Canadian with $15,000 or more of credit card debt, and what you are doing right now isn't paying off the balances, then visit totaldebtfreedom.ca and hit get a free quote to see if you qualify to settle your credit card debt for less than you owe today over the next 48 months. Make sure you check out the top pinned comment on YouTube for all the links mentioned during the show.